let's change gears and move over to hair care. From a solutions point of view, what are people looking for and what are brands kind of catering for here? Um, off the top of my head, I, I hear claims about bonds and um, split ends, um, hair thinning. Give us a bit of the kind of lay of the land when it comes to hair care. Hair care is actually really tricky to talk about because um, so much hair care research is just hidden and locked up inside hair care companies. Um, there's very few like there's basically no incentive to publish peer-reviewed research on hair care. And yeah, so a lot of it is just very secretive. With hair care, it's also more complex because um, I guess it's more and less complex. So hair is dead, which means you don't have to think too much about like biological stuff when it comes to hair care, except for things like growing more hair, which is like within the living part. But with things like long hair, less split ends, it's not really about biology. Yeah, but the way that hair care products are made a lot of the time, if you have exactly the same ingredients, having different proportions will give a very different result. So with something like a shampoo, the core ingredients are always the same. It's like water, a bunch of surfactants, and then stuff to keep the shampoo preserved and stable and like the right thickness. With conditioners, it is generally water, um, some sort of um, cationic surfactant, and then a fatty alcohol, and then a bunch of other ingredients. And so, yeah, it's really the proportions. Um, and you can't see that as a consumer. So a lot of the time it is about trial and error, trying out different products on your hair and seeing how your hair um, interacts. In terms of ingredients, so those are the standard ones. With, there are some add-ins and there are some special, I guess, active ingredients that will change, that will do special things to your hair. So with split ends, I would say looking, you should probably be looking for a really intense conditioner. Um, you can't really repair split ends. There are a couple of products on the market, but I don't think they work that well. Um, that can sort of like literally like sew the split end back together. It's pretty cool, um, but I don't think they work that well. So I think it's really about using um, a conditioner with some special ingredients. So silicones tend to get a bad rap, but they're actually really good for coating the hair and giving it that sort of protective shield. So silicones are good. There are some special functionalized silicones um, like amodimethicone, which can um, which don't weigh down hair. So don't be scared of silicones just because you've heard they um, make your hair greasy or coat it in an inactive shield. That is a good thing. And there's tons of different products on the market with very different effects. And a lot of it is actually about um, handling of hair. So because hair is dead, like from the moment it leaves your scalp, it can only get worse. Um, it's only going to get more damaged. It will never really get like healthier. So um, one of the things is really just avoiding doing too much with your hair, having too much like physical, I guess, friction with your hair when it's wet. When it's wet, hair swells up and the um, cuticles tend to stick up more. The cuticles are like those, um, they're scales on your hair that should be lying flat and they're protective. But when your hair is wet, they stick up and then they can break off. And so your hair loses some of that protection. So um, yeah, be really careful when combing your hair when wet, when brushing your hair when wet. Um, don't get a towel and just like rub your hair to try to dry it, like try to squeeze it, um, treat it gently. In terms of heat, um, too much heat can also break down your hair. It can cause a lot of damage. And so um yeah, with heating, be really careful with heat with heat styling. Um, use a heat protectant. So there are lots of products that um, can form a layer on top of the hair and spread out the heat more. And that means you get less like hot spots on your hair when you're using a hair straightener or um, a hair dryer. In terms of hair drying, there is actually a study that found that drying your hair on low heat was actually better for it than letting it air dry just because your hair wasn't in that wet, fragile state for quite as long. So yeah, um, if you are drying your hair with a hairdryer, just don't blast it too hot. What about the frequency of, of shampoo and conditioner? I seem to have, I've never really had a routine. I kind of just make it up, but I go off my gut feel, which is probably the wrong way of doing it. What is it something that we're doing daily, every second day, once a week? Is there any evidence to, to sort of suggest what is the best in terms of helping maintain healthy, strong hair? I think in general, um, there isn't really like a strict guideline and 
going by your gut feel is actually not a bad option at all. So um, a lot of the time with shampoo, it is about how often you need to get rid of the gunk on your scalp. So yeah, in terms of frequency, have again, having your hair wet makes it more fragile. And so you are kind of aiming to have your hair wet as few times as possible. But in reality, a lot of people, their scalps do need to be cleaned more frequently. And so daily shampooing can be a better idea. There's also some evidence that if your hair, like your scalp is not cleaned that often, if you get a lot of buildup, that can actually cause hair loss. So yeah, overall, yeah, gut feel is probably the way to go. So in terms of that sort of quote unquote gunk, on the scalp that could contribute to hair loss. Is that something that you can avoid through regular shampoo? And do you need to sort of shampoo a particular way for that to, to occur in terms of sort of spending time massaging your scalp? Or do you need another product similar to, we were talking about chemical exfoliants for the face. Do you need some form of a abrasive scrub or what is going to be best for helping promote a healthy scalp? I mean, we've been using shampoo for like decades and it seems to be fine for most people. There are a bunch of new products on the market that are like trying to, it's called the skinification of hair. So there's just, I feel like it is really the beauty industry trying to find more types of products to sell to people, um, but they do exist. There are like chemical exfoliants, scrub, um, scalp scrubs. There are like silicone brushes for like working the shampoo and your hair a bit better and yeah if you've always had issues with your scalp then maybe trying these out would be good but I don't think everyone needs them shampoo should be enough for most people and one thing you could try if you do have longer hair and you are finding a lot of buildup is not getting your conditioner anywhere near your scalp so conditioner doesn't really have a purpose for your scalp the hair up the top is already quite well conditioned and in modern shampoos there are actually ingredients that will coat the hair and have a like form of protective coating. So chances are you don't need extra conditioning up here. So if you um, only put your conditioner below the ears, then that can reduce some of that buildup. Okay. And on hair loss, if someone's experiencing that, so are there any particular ingredients in shampoos and conditioners that they should be looking out for that would differentiate a sort of regular shampoo and conditioner versus one that is particularly effective for hair loss? So there are actually pharmaceutical products that you can use for hair loss. So minoxidil, for example, um, and these are generally, I believe, prescription only in Australia. So you can go to the doctor and get um, something for that. In terms of things that cause hair loss or um, can encourage hair growth, it's all a very murky sort of market with um, encouraging hair growth because that is technically another drug claim that cosmetics aren't meant to make. And I don't think there's really anything that's really been proven to work aside from those drugs. For hair loss, I would probably look out for things that you are allergic to. So for example, MI and MCI, I think they tend to be kind of going under the radar as causes of hair loss because yeah if you are allergic you are getting your scalp inflamed and that will probably not be good for your hair follicles. 